I've been wood carving with the Fordham SR Rotary tool over five years now. I do love this tool, but there are some important things you should consider before buying. I'm asked questions almost every day about the Fordham, so I am hoping to address those questions here. I'm not sponsored by Fordham, so they are not paying me to say anything nice. I am going to give you my unbiased, real-world use opinion. By the way, if you are into wood carving, go to the link below and download my free beginner's guide to wood carving with a flex shaft rotary tool ebook. The Fordham flex shaft is currently available in four different units, but we are focusing on the SR model, which is a unit for wood carving. Even Fordham's website says that 80% of customers should get an SR model. These units sell for well over $300 if you are purchasing a kit model which comes with accessories. So why does the Fordham cost so much compared to other rotary tools? These units are made for serious hobbyists and professionals that need a workhorse. Every single Fordham is built like a tank and I can tell you right now, these things are made to last. I have seen Fordham units being sold on eBay that is over 50 years old. I mean, that just tells you something about the quality. Now the weight on the SR model is a little under 12 pounds. So make sure you have a sturdy hanger to hang it up. I personally use mine with the Fordham flex shaft hanger, which clamps on my work desk. The flex shaft is 39 inches long with a key tip shaft cable, which connects to a variety of interchangeable hand pieces. More on the hand pieces in a second. You can see how much bigger the Fordham is compared to other rotary tools, like the Dremel. This is because of the 1 6 horsepower motor, which is rated at continuous duty or maximum efficiency. The motor features a reverse option, which gives a lot of advantages, especially to left-handed people so they can have more control while carving. I personally like using the reverse setting for certain carving techniques. Fordham has three different speed controls that you can use, a plastic foot piece, a cast iron foot piece, or a tabletop speed control. I have the plastic foot control, which is included in the wood carving kit. Let me show you how this works. When I step on the pedal, the flex shaft wire begins to spin. When I release pressure off my foot, it goes slower, and when I press down and put pressure on the pedal, it goes faster, just like driving a car. The RPMs on the SR model is rated up to 18,000 RPMs, and it's plenty enough for most people when it comes to wood carving. Pro tip, a lot of first time carvers get caught up in how fast they should run their rotary tools at in RPMs. This really depends on two things. Number one, the type of wood, and number two, the burr or bit, because every burr or bit has a speed rating to it. For the most part, I almost always run mine on high unless I am doing some intense hogging where I need to remove a lot of wood. When I am using my Dremel 3000, which usually goes up to 32,000 RPMs, I try to keep it around 28,000 or so. This is something you will have to fill out when you begin carving. Everyone's application will be different. Since my Dremel 3000 runs at a higher speed, I do like switching to it for finer detail work. So if you're doing detail work, you usually wanna run at a faster RPMs. One cool thing about the Fordham is that they offer a variety of interchangeable hand pieces. I find that this tremendously speeds up my carving time because I'm not changing burrs constantly. At the end of the day, you will be amazed at how much time is lost because of burr changes. So investing into good hand pieces is no problem for me, but it could be a caveat for a lot of people. Now get this, the hand pieces start around $70 and can go over $300 depending on the model of the hand piece. So for the price of one hand piece, you can buy a whole new rotary tool. I know this sounds ridiculous, but you have to understand the market that Fordham is appealing to. Now, when you purchase a Fordham, it does come with a standard hand piece. I use the Collet style H44T handpiece that came with my Fordham for almost two years before buying two or more handpieces because I didn't want to spend the money. So if you do purchase the Fordham, don't feel like you have to spend a bunch of money on handpieces. Tools are acquired over time. So inside of these hand pieces right here is something that you call a collet. Now collets are used to house the burrs inside of the handpiece. You always want to match the burr shank size to the collet size. 
For instance, if I have a 1 8 shank size burr, I will match that with a 1 8 sized collet. One special thing about the Fordham is that it allows a 1 4 bit with a larger handpiece like the previously mentioned H44T. I mean, look at this thing. The H44T is significantly thicker than this smaller handpiece right here, which I use these for two different applications. Now I'm going to drop the 1 4 collet in here put on the cap, tighten it up just a little bit, and now I'm going to put a 1 4 size burr in here and drop it in. And the secret to this handpiece right here, it comes with a wrench and a little prod. So I'm going to stick the prod in there, just like so. I'm going to hand tighten it just a little bit, and then I'm going to take the wrench on the other end and just tighten it up like so. Look how big this 1 4 burr is compared to the other bits I have here of different sizes. And I personally use it anytime that I am carving an axe handle with hard hickory. Before we use the rotary tool, we need to hang it up. Now there are some people that leaves there flat, but I don't recommend that if you're a wood carving. I want mine in the air, that way I have control with the flex shaft. The flex shaft hanger I am using is the model MH1 from Fordham. Now this holds two rotary tools and just like the flex shaft units, it is heavy duty and is built like a tank. Now we want to clamp this to the table and insert the metal rod for which the rotary tools hang on. Before we begin carving, we need to make sure that we have the motor elevated to the right height. You need to have this up just high enough where you will have slack in the flex shaft like you see here. We need to remain agile while making difficult cuts. The best way that I can explain the power of the Fordham is that it has torque at any speed, high or low. Now to demonstrate this, I am going to use the Fordham on this piece of cedar and just make a simple cut with this roughing burr. I'm also going to use my Dremel 3000 to show you the difference. Let's turn on the dust collection. This is at the low speed setting. This isn't bogging down at all. Look at that. Now let's go to high. Look at that. Now we are going to use the same burr in the Dremel 3000. We are going to test this at 5,000 RPMs, then go to 32,000 RPMs. You can see that it's stopping. This is too much for the Dremel. Now, if I were to let the burr do the work for me, that works better, but I'm still carving at too low of an RPM. Let's bump this up to 32,000. It's going right through now. It's starting to struggle. You can hear the motor bog down. Out of the two rotary tools, the Fordham is the obvious winner with this small test. I mean, at the low RPMs, the Fordham didn't even bog down. It just hogged right through that cedar. Now, when I switched to the Dremel here, when I had it at 5,000 RPMs, you could see where the burr actually stopped. The motor shut off. And if I were to keep doing that, it would have burnt the motor up. You can see here where the Dremel performed very well at 32,000 RPMs cutting through this wood. Now the motor was bogging down a little bit. And the only caveat to carving or hogging rather at this fast of speed is that you can burn the wood. And I can see the cedar burn just a little bit here, but it's not a problem. This is just a test piece. After seeing this test, please keep in mind that I am abusing these tools. Normally, I wouldn't hold the Dremel down this this hard, I would let the burr do the work for me. The same goes with the Fordham. I just wanted to show you the power differences. So anytime that you are carving, let the burr do the work for you. And I want you to know, I have tackled some big jobs with my Dremel 3000 and it hasn't failed me yet. 
If you are new to carving with rotary tools, I want to give you some practical advice that I promise will help you if you actually put it into practice. And that is carving shapes and patterns. It's going to teach you so much about control when you begin to carve. So the first thing that we wanna do is carve a circle. Now I picked up this template on Amazon. I will leave all the tool links below. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna draw a circle just like this. Make sure your circle is pretty thick. Now, you can see I have a perfectly straight circle. Now, we can do the same thing with squares and triangles. And to let you know, I do have a tutorial over this in your free ebook that you can grab below. Now, to carve this, I will be using a round carbide burr inside the Fordham. And I'm going to go around here and just stay straight as I can. And before we start, I want to let you know something. Put your pinky out like this, because this is going to allow for flexibility when you are carving. To begin carving, I wanna put the burr on here and begin going to the left. Now, if I go to the right, because of the direction of the burr, it will run away from me. So as I begin carving, I'm gonna turn this. So let me show you how to do this. I'm gonna hit the gas. Looky there. Now watch, I'm gonna turn this. There we go, I went pretty fast on this one. Now you can see some inconsistencies and that's because I didn't keep the burr at a consistent pressure. The next thing we are going to do is to cut through this again and to even everything out. And this time we want to keep a consistent pressure. There we go. Now, I know this is a basic circle. I even messed up because I was carving too fast, but this is where you want to be if you are just starting out. Draw some circles, draw some triangles, draw some squares, and carve those over and over and over again until you get the hang of carving with your rotary tool. Now, I'll tell you, all these designs that you will carve is going to work on your hand-eye coordination. And when you begin carving other things in real life, whatever it is, animals or designs, guess what? You are already going to be conditioned for the way you're supposed to turn your hand. And this is what messes up most people. They won't take it to the basics and carve these things. So I'll promise you, start with the basics, carve some shapes, and you will see a significant improvement in your carving. So, is the Fordham worth the price tag? In my opinion, most definitely. If you are passionate about wood carving and your budget allows for a machine like this, then go for it. There is nothing wrong with having something nice that is going to last you. With that being said, a smaller rotary tool like the Dremel may serve your purpose just as well. So you need to look at what you are going to be doing because some of you, honestly, you don't need to spend all the money on a Fordham. You just need to get something like a Dremel. Now, there are cheaper options available on Amazon if you don't have much of a budget, but I always encourage people to buy a name brand because if something goes wrong, you have a warranty that you can trust. I hope you enjoyed this review and the demonstration of the Fordham. Like I said, I try to remain unbiased in this, but the truth is I have been using this tool for a good while now, and it hasn't let me down. I'm a big believer in it. And with that being said, I'm also a big believer in other brands like Dremel. So just look at your need and find which rotary tool serves that need the best. All right. I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. And if you would like to check out the tools I was using here, like the Fordham and the Dremel, I will leave some links below. And don't forget your free ebook below. Talk to you soon.